so Father of the Rain is a novel that traces the relationship between um, a daughter whose name is Daly Amory and her father, Gardner Amory, over the course of about 34 years. And uh, it, it's really um, a novel that, that examines that relationship very closely because it's, it's quite a disturbing relationship. The father is uh, a very functional but quite flamboyant alcoholic and she is someone um, who has been sort of seeking his approval for a long time. I think um, the most fun part of writing fiction for me is, is really in the discovery, is in that um, blank page stage, which is really the most terrifying as well. But I, I really love the, um, the feeling of, of going somewhere that I had no idea I would go and, and discovering things about my characters, which which may be a way of discovering things about myself. When I start, I really don't have that many thoughts. I usually just have a, a little kernel of an idea. And then, um, then quite quickly, I start to get more ideas. Um, and I always have scrap paper with me. And so they go onto scrap paper, and then they eventually go into the notebook that I'm writing in, because I, I write by hand. And, uh, and so I always keep about 20 pages in the back of my notebook for notes. I really like the process of taking my notebook and typing the whole thing in. You know, it's, it's literally rewriting it. I have to write every single word all over again. It's not cutting, it's not pasting. Um, it's really a reevaluation all over again of the work. You know, I don't really feel like I, I necessarily look for inspiration. Um, and I, I think that things come to me, and I, I can name a few places where I think that they come to me more. Um, they, they always, all my life, ideas have come to me right as I'm waking up in the morning. And, and I, I think it's, you know, when the brain hasn't really locked into reality yet, uh, that there's sort of a fluid place that sometimes I just wake up and I'm already telling myself a story, and I don't even know where it came from. And so I, I always keep a little scrap paper by my bed so I can just, you know, scribble down things if they come to me then. And then I also, in the car is another place. For, I think my mind must drift off and, uh, and somehow find some sort of creative place sometimes. And uh, so I always have to have um, a pen and paper in the car too, which is not always the safest thing to do. And then also reading. Um, I find reading really triggers all sorts of things in me. And I mean, I could read about sort of an 80-year-old woman in Prague, and suddenly um, I have a memory of being 17 years old in Massachusetts. And, you know, and I, I don't even know what the connection is, but there's something, there's some flavor there in the writing that, that triggers something in my mind, and that can just create ideas for me. What I also like to do is go to a restaurant for lunch and get a booth um, with sort of, you know, a nice bench seat with a cushion and I have a cup of tea, I have lunch, a cup of tea and a tiramisu. And there's something about the combination of lunch, uh, tea and tiramisu and the bench um, and then I can really write well. I really try to stay away from saying the words writer, writer's block. Um, and so I, I think it's more a depletion, and I, I definitely think that I, I get depleted and want to write but can't write and don't just have nothing inside me. And what I do then is I say, all right, I'm not going to write for three weeks. I'm just going to, during my writing time, I'm going to make a cup of tea, I'm going to go sit on the couch, and I'm just going to read. And I always read with, you know, with a notebook and notes, and so, um, so it's sort of an active hoping to find inspiration reading. And, uh, and usually I do that for about four days and then I'm back to writing again. So that's my, that's my solution. Um, my favorite word. I think, it, this is not my favorite sound, but it's my favorite meaning. Um, and it's just cozy. We, we lived in Italy for a year and they don't have that word. They don't have a word that means anything like cozy. And the idea 
of not knowing cozy or how to be cozy or aiming for cozy is just something I could never imagine not having. So I feel very, I felt sort of when we lived there, renewed gratitude for that word, cozy.